you know, they don't make podcasts like they used to. This is the number one 24-year-old boomer podcast. Let me tell you about questions of the month for June. Alex, what do you like most about being a 23-year-old boomer? Uh, well, it's, it's soon to be 24-year-old boomer. And I like, uh... Having a full-time job that's physically intensive, coming home and and going like, yeah, I don't really feel like playing video games anymore. Like, Ted, I've done it. I'm too old for video games now. I'm a boomer. So, speaking of boomers, let's go ahead and go right into our our questions here. We're going to open up with Walrus. Which studio's E3 conference do you think will be the first to use 2007 gaming? Let me try that again. I'm I'm a 24-year-old boomer, so, like, I've had a stroke. We have fun here. The first to use 2007 gamer slang. Well, this question is a little bit late, considering E3 was, like, June 10th. I don't think he knew that we answered them, like, the end of the month. You should probably make that clear on the Patreon. Eh, I'll get around to it. Eh. Uh, the 2000... I remember, was it Ubisoft, where they had the division, where everyone was, like... It was doing that fake gamer shit. See you on where the they other would run side. Around <laughs> See you on the other side. That was uh, that was pretty that was pretty cool. There was no hashtag girlwood. Uh, there's less pirates. Uh, what, what's your favorite 2007 gamer slang, Alex? Okay, so once again, I was too old for video games and too tired, uh, so I didn't really give a shit about E3. But I watched Nintendo's because it was on my day off, and I remember they were showing off like people playing their switches in like public and shit. I remember the one they were at the little like shitty uh, hipster cafe, and the black lady's like, "All right, game on." I'm like, "Boo!" <laughs> so your favorite 2007? My favorite 2007 gamer slang is noob, but spelled N E W B. Noob is a word. I have not heard someone use noob unironically since maybe 2004. See, my favorite, like, old internet slang, I I, I don't want to say video games because, like, everyone uses it, is troll. Who the fuck uses that word anymore and, like, means it? It, it's such a, it has no meaning anymore, man. Overwatch's trolls are losing. Ex- exactly what I was thinking. Like, boo! <laughs> Uh, speaking of booze, next question here from Comical. How many cavities had you each had, like, total, across your whole life? I, uh, did not have a single cavity until I was, like, 17. And I don't know if that's because I didn't go to the dentist a lot, so I just didn't know? Uh, I remember my dentist, because I was actually up near where Alex was when he lived in Illinois, and the guy, they had like a Nintendo Wii in there. And I went in there and I made Andrew Hussey on the Mii Maker. Because it took like two hours for them to open up my appointment. And, uh, yeah. I also, um, the dentist I go to now, I can only get in there super early in the morning. And, uh, last time I went there, I, uh, went to bed, woke up at 3am to take my friend's, uh, my friend's girlfriend to the hospital. Because he had like a... He had, like, a seizure, so I took him over there, and uh, they didn't have a ride back, so I just stayed there for, like, two hours. So it was, like, 6 a.m. by the time I left. And I had a dentist appointment at 9 a.m., so I'm like, oh, I'll just stay up, fuck it, pop a fucking sip, boomer USA. And uh, I went there, and then on the way back, I got into a car crash in front of Taco Bell, and now my car has not had a front grill ever since. So, that's where I'm at. That's, That's how many cavities I've had. If I was to say, you didn't actually answer the question, you asshole. Okay, well, anyway. Uh, I apparently have a couple of very teeny tiny cavities, in finger quotes, on a couple of my teeth. I think it's like two. And I haven't actually been to the dentist in like five years, so they're probably bigger by now. I'd probably go do that at some point. But I did actually uh, had a really nasty cavity in one of my very, very like back chewing teeth. You know, like the, like the last one. And uh, one day, I bit into so a sweet Alex, tart. if it's the back teeth that are chewy, are they Chewbacca's? So one day, I bit into a fucking sweet tart, and uh, I was like, huh, weird. That felt a little weird in my tooth. Oh, well, I basically ignored the fact that my tooth just split in half. <gasps> so, we go to the dentist to go get checked out, because, like, that's weird. My tooth feels surprisingly sharp against my fucking lip right about now. 
So we go to the dentist, and uh, they, they show me a little like mirror because you can kind of see it when, when they're looking in your mouth. Like, like uh, Alex, your tooth is like almost completely removed from your head. I'm like, oh, that doesn't look too good. <laughs> and like the inside of it was like all black. Like, the tooth looked fine on the outside because the cavity just got so big on the inside, it just ate it right the fuck out. So Ooh, frittata. So they used fucking like pliers and pulled the tooth, the uh, the shattered tooth out of my head. And uh, then my wisdom tooth grew in to replace it. I never also got my wisdom teeth removed. I don't take care of that great care of my fucking teeth now that I'm saying this out loud like this. Should probably go Yo, to the dentist soon. Get one of those fucking electric toothbrushes. They're pretty good. They make your teeth feel real nice and nice and clean. I like I it. I brush and floss my fucking teeth a lot. I just don't feel like getting up and going to the fucking dentist. But, like, I didn't remove any of my wisdom teeth, so they just kind of grew in. So, like, all of that, uh, all those braces I wore when I was a kid are basically ruined now because my teeth just kind of, like, went back to being, like, pretty good looking but not, you know, perfectly aligned because now there's the more teeth button in and shit, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah. So, I guess technically I've had three total cavities and only one I actually took care of. I'm going to go to the dentist in a week or two now. Thanks for that question. I think, actually, uh, part of the reason why I crashed my car, and it, it wasn't actually, like, it wasn't, like, a dangerous crash. I didn't even hurt the other person's car. I literally went over and just wiped the scratch off, and the person's like, yeah, think you're a little worse off. You could just go. But um, I had a, I had a cavity that was wrapping around my tooth, and so they had to go full clockwork orange on my ass and put, like, a metal thing in my mouth, it was like, just twist, 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 twist. And all I could see, because I had to keep my head straight, was like, I was like looking up in the corner of my eye, and the guy's just pressing down, twisting this piece of metal that's slowly pulling my lip up. It was awesome. I'm not scared to go to the dentist or like a doctor's office. I think it's cool as hell. I'm not scared of them at all. I told the guy, I'm like, hey, tell me what's going on here. And he was describing to me like, oh, well, uh, right now we're going in here and actually using sonic bursts to break technically this part of your tooth and put this stuff on and it's cool but when that's they, that's uh, that's teeth when they rip my uh, one more thing when they rip my tooth off uh rip my tooth out they're like doesn't that hurt i'm like i mean it might have hurt if you didn't put all that uh the, inject all that fucking painkiller into my gums uh the time so the last time i went to the dentist before i crashed my car uh i went there with my mom and they gave me like four shots of Novocaine, and I was I was still feeling it. And but like I've been there for an hour and a half already. I'm like I just want to go, just do it. Ooh, that was a smart decision, Alex. I just had to sit there because I'm like I don't want them to install like inject me again with this shit. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bear it. That was a bad idea, Alex. Don't get your teeth drilled into without numbing it entirely. Yeah, it's, some people are more resistant to like Novocaine or whatever the fuck that shit's called. So oh, like, also he totally fucking cut my lip open with the uh, thing because he started oh. too early. And it's went, I was like, oh shit! I even looked up at him. I was like, hmm? I gave him like a oh fuck, oh dude, you just fucked up. I just didn't care. I wasn't gonna give him a hard time. So speaking of hard times, this one's from L Liberty. What's your favorite handheld game console other than the Bandai Wonder Swan Color? <laughs> what? You know. Uh, so I actually, um, had a Game Boy Advance for a long while and I used that a ton and then I lost it. And then my little brother stole me a new one from like the baseball diamonds. And I really liked that one because what I did, cause I didn't want anyone to steal it was I carved my name into it. So I took a stolen Game Boy Advance and carved my name into it and I still have it. That's my favorite handheld. Also the DS I had. That the top was all scratched up, so on a school field trip, we stopped at Taco Bell, and I got a bunch of race car stickers and put it on top. <laughs> uh, if I had to pick one, uh, let's see. I would either go with Game Boy Advance or my, like, 3DS or something. Those are the two I probably played the most out of, out of uh, all my handhelds. Yeah, because you had. The, I remember you had the Game Boy SP, and that thing was pretty cool. Well, remember, uh, much like you, I didn't own that Game Boy SP. So I had a regular Game Boy Advance. And uh, I was borrowing my friend's Game Boy SP one day before I moved. And he's never had that SP again. You're one of those people, huh, Alex? I've done that twice. I also <laughs> I also no stole somebody's... Uh, I'm just saying, I've just stole somebody's copy of Metal Gear Solid, uh, the GameCube remake. You're a terrible person, Alex, and you deserve Yee. all the hardships in your life. Yee. And speaking of terrible people, 
This next one's from Phil the Muffin. Happy birthday, Ted. June 17th. When are we going to do the Let Me Tell You About Meetup? I can't wait to show you my Alex slash Tad slash art. So that's that's a that's a big mood right there. There, I thought about it. There's like shitty small cons around my place, but Alex lives in Idaho, so the cost of a plane ticket would like probably be seventeen times more than any kind of like money you would get back from doing a like a con panel. Maybe though, it'd be pretty goofy if I'm ever if we ever had the chance to. We're going to Evo, so if you fucking just want to go to Evo, we'll be there. Yeah, find me at Evo. Try try to pull some bullshit on my Pac-Man. All right, I'll be playing a competitive game, Super Smash Brothers Four. I have to. I'll have to go like in full. Uh, I joked about. I joked with Alex about bringing my fucking Homestuck costume, but I could just retrofit that into a Pat and Normstrom costume, and that would allow me to play Smash Bros because it would have a built-in gas mask. Why do you think it is that Smash Bros. players are so fucking disgusting and don't bathe, Alex? Uh, well, you see, it's because all Smash players are children. I think I think it honestly is just like... I think they all have a little bit of the magic touch, Tad. And I probably shouldn't keep this conversation going before I start getting a little, a little, a little dicey. Uh, I mean... Yeah, it makes sense because people who play Smash Bros. So if you're if you're there to if you're at a fighting game convention because you like fighting games, there's a there's a mood and a type of player base that is attached to a fighting game. Smash Bros. has a much wider appeal, so you get more people, and with more people, you, you end up like uh, when I went to Mind Games, one of my local comic shops, and it smelled like farts the entire time I was there. You get those type of people. I imagine it's because like Smash Brothers isn't like a an, like a traditional fighting game, right? It just, it is it is a party game, but people who want to take it more seriously happen to be people who you know they're those kinds of people who want to take a thing that really shouldn't be taken seriously seriously. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's that'd be that'd be fun. I'd like to do like a like a con thing or something small like that. Uh, next question here from Chris. Are multiplayer-only games even a good idea anymore? It Ooh. seems like for every Overwatch, there are a dozen lawbreakers these days. Yep. <sighs> they don't make them like they used to. Now, Team Fortress 2, now that's a game. <sighs> that's a great game right there. Okay, so I actually like this question a lot. So, the problem with a bunch of multiplayer games is... Everyone has their multiplayer game at this point. You made so fucking many, and, like, you, you just play a multiplayer game, right? You just keep playing it and playing it and playing it because it's really, like, you know, very quick and uh, replayable, right? And so, it usually has long-term support. Yes, and it's usually a relatively large time investment to, like, play this con- uh, continuously. So why would I play a shitload of, uh, of Lawbreakers... When I already hit, can play Overwatch, a similar game that, like, I've already put more time and have, like, more shit unlocked in, you know? You know what I mean? That's kind of the problem. That's what, uh, oh, fuck, dude. Who was that one guy? That, that fat dude. Uh, Jim Sterling, right? I saw one of his fucking videos on V, because, you know, video games. And, uh, he, he talked about how, uh, games as a service is... Uh, well, 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 it does kind of work for now. If every single person is trying to make a game as a service with continuing support all the time, no one's going to buy new games because everyone's just going to be playing the one game they already put a shitload of money and time into, especially the money part. Or people are going to keep trying that and then they're going to bleed players until it's no longer profitable because, oh, uh, this um, action RPG that I've been playing that's been getting support... Well, they can't just keep making, like, brand new story arcs and stuff. You know, eventually you have your main game content, and then you kind of add smaller stuff, and eventually people bail, and there you go. Not everyone's going to be like me playing Dungeons of Dreadmore for 180 hours, you know? Well, they don't want 100. They want 1,000. They they want those league numbers of people playing, you know? Yeah. I think multiplayer-only games, uh... I... Going when I was playing through God of War, it was nice to not have to worry about it being a multiplayer game or having to go PvP against someone. It was nice to just it's always nice to just take a fucking break from a competitive game to just play like a single player, run through, do some dumb shit game. Uh, Even dude. Audio Surf. Audio uh, Surf 2 is a uh 
it's a single player rhythm game, but it has that scoreboard on it the whole time. So I can always see right there that I'm in a competitive game technically. Leaderboards are totally okay. See, it's with these all these multiplayer games and all these like fucking all this patching and shit. You know, back in the psh, old days, I fucking uh, well, I remember I got this Sega Saturn a couple years back with the tax return, uh, and I was like hooking it up and fixing it up and shit because it kind of got a little knocked, knocked a little looser in the fucking shipping because you know male people. Uh, when I got it working and uh, played it, I felt so goddamn happy to put my game disc in, turn the thing on, and just immediately be able to play the fucking game. I did not understand how annoying it was to patch games until I actually went back and played something old. You know what I mean? Yep, back in the good old days. So this next question here is from Motion. With Blaze Blue Tag coming out this month, and I think that game actually came out like maybe two weeks ago. Uh, how do you guys feel about simplified inputs in fighting games? Tad being a Shoto with good Oki is too strong, by the way. Please nerf his options. Now, in the let me tell you about fighters, let's fight about. Uh, now, okay. I don't like charge characters, but I understand that's because I'm bad. I see the appeal with, like, you hold down and you press up and it's like, bam, and it feels super cool. I, at first, I didn't like, um, some inputs are stupid, uh, especially if you're going into fighting games completely blind and you see, like, the image for how you're supposed to do a DP oh, and you, it makes no oh. fucking sense. Or, or you, you you try to see, uh, DJ or Vega's fucking ultras in the Street Fighter 4, the L charge. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? But some, I, there was, um, a game that, uh, was it? I think Evo 2016, they were showing it super hard. It was the robot fighting game. It got bought out by Riot Games. And it had the, um... It had, like, cooldowns on your moves, and they were just Smash Bros, where you hold, like, a direction and press the special button, and that was it. And I kind of like that, but I understand that some inputs are done because if the move... Like, if you were able to just flash kick with a DP input, that'd be way too good. They'd have to change how the move works, but when you have that, when you have like a charge, we have to hold it down for a bit. The opponent knows this move can only come out in these certain situations, or like a three sixty. You know, for a three sixty, they've got to jump in and then grab you or hit you with a move to buffer it. Mm-hmm. I do, however, I will say that Dragon Ball Fighters has a really, really, really good setup where almost all the supers are just quarter circle. That's it. Not a big deal. You don't really. I don't think. I don't think you, besides some characters needing charge inputs and 360s just for fun, I don't think you need to do anything more complicated than just a quarter circle. Uh, I, I like DPs and shit. Like, I, I'm okay with the simplified in, inputs, and I actually really like it how it's set in Dragon Balls, because it allows you to, like, pick up a character and immediately transfer all the knowledge you have of that character to somebody else. You You can, like... Uh, you can guess, like, oh, what's this quarter circle forward, back, and whatever the fuck, right? It allows you to easily transition and shit. And that, that was kind of a thing back with uh, Street Fighter with, like, all the uh, Shoto characters, right? So, like, Ken, Akuma, and Ryu, they would have different properties on their moves, but they would all have, you know, the fireball, the DP, and the spin kick, right? So, like, when you played one, you'd at least get the gist of how to play someone else. So when you played, like... Fei Long, you would know that his uh, he has a DP motion, and it has similar properties to Ryu's uh, Shoryuken. It was his DP. So you can kind of transfer that kind of like knowledge, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, like, I like simplified inputs, but I really hope that we never get rid of the old ones that are more complicated, because I feel, I, I feel like they need to be there. I feel like them being there makes things a little more enjoyable. And like you just said, like, it gives characters... It puts them in a play style. If they, if they break that play style, it just makes that more impressive. Kind of like you see Guile. Guile's got his flash, he a sonic boom. That's all he's got. Both of them are charge moves, so he's, he, you, you'd think he'd be more defensive. But Guile's can be a- offensive as fuck, but it takes a higher level of play to be able to, like, constantly be moving forward while still, like, holding the charges and shit, right? I like that. It's another level of, like, play. Now, what I don't like, though, is I don't like Ed and Falk in Street Fighter V. I hate that two-button shit. That can fuck right off. That now, how does feels that bad. It Okay, so it's just like... So you know how you do the input and hit a button, right? So for Ed, you would just hit, like, a light punch or medium punch or, like, medium punch, heavy punch. You know, two two punches, and he'll do his, like, uppercut punch. That's it. That, that The input is hitting those buttons at the same time. And it's really... 
really awkward in practice. At least on a pad, it's really awkward. I feel like it feels more natural on a stick because the buttons are all laid out like right there for your hands to push, you know? But when mm-hmm. you're using your thumb and like your index finger, it feels really bad. But uh, you would so say like you would do your combo, which would be like, I don't know, like light kick, light jab, and then you would immediately t- uh, hit the, you would take your thumb off of light jab, and then immediately hit like light jab and uh, medium punch at the same fucking time, and then like uppercut him or something. It It feels weird, and I don't like it. It's really bad. So uh, I got another question here from PepsiCan EX. Uh, you know what's not sweet? Bad users. Do you feel? Who do you feel was the worst user in the Discord server? See, now, okay, this Ooh. is an example of like a bad question because I'm not just going to like shout someone out and put them on blast. That's rude. Rude. So, uh, I have two things. One, please refer to our old episode online out of the oddities. Because we've met some people we didn't like. But you know what? Number two. You know who I will shit on, uh, dude? I shit on my dog, Jasper. <laughs> so I got this old-ass dog. His name's Jasper. And he's, like, really old. He's he's hitting that, like, oh, he's dying part of, of the dog life, you know? He just says real casual. Well, it's, dude, I've I've had tons of pets that have died. I've gotten over it. I've had tons of fucking pets. So, like... Jasper uh, can't control his bowels as much anymore because he's like really, really old. So I remember we I walked him at night and he pooped, and so that way he wouldn't poop again until Sherry, my aunt, walks him in the morning. So I walk him and uh, I go to sleep, and I wake up and Sherry tells me because this is like a few hours after. Sherry's like, "Oh my god, Alex, you should have seen it. It was just everywhere." I'm like, what? What happened? Like, Jasper just took like the biggest fucking shit in the house ever. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like, like it was on his bed. It was just like a huge fucking mountain of shit. I've never seen him shit so much. <laughs> like the fucking <laughs> the opening scene in Super Mario Brothers. We need a plumber stat. There is yeah. shit everywhere. It's all over the walls. We need help. Like, Click. <laughs> I. <laughs> I I didn't see it because I was asleep and she cleaned it up at that point, but <laughs> just imagine. I imagine that fucking South Park episode. Where Stan uh He takes the, the shit biggest, and, yeah. and he like rises up while he does it. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs are dumb. dumb. <laughs> My dog is dying. So speaking of dying, this question is from Ilobite or Alobite. Is there any game that has come out of or still in Steam Early Access that you consider extremely good or worth playing? Now, I did accidentally get conned into buying an Early Access game. You fool. It was called Hot Lava. And what it is, is it's like, it, it's got this uh, this gimmick to it where it has uh, like a 90s cartoon where it has a bunch of episodes of that for all their trailers and you can find them in game and shit. And uh, I bought the game, like, oh, cool, You, it's it's one of those games you just jump around a big environment and making sure not to touch the ground, because it's hot lava. So I buy it, and I'm like, oh, this is rad. And then I find out it's only got, like, two levels. Because it didn't have the early access on it, because it was in, quote-unquote, beta. So it didn't have the big early access logo on it. The game's still kind of cool, it's got a fun gimmick to it, but mm, mm, they got me good, Alex. See, you you were telling me about this game, trying to hustle me into it as well. Because it gives uh, you I two re- copies for $10. Yeah, yeah well, whatever. But uh, you, you showed me these little cartoons that they have, and they're really, really cute. I love them a lot. Like, but you'll have to first pass the lava test. New lava set from the toxic domain. Available now. Some assembly required. Like, it just cuts to a good commercial. It's so fucking funny. Like... I feel like they should have probably spent more time actually making the game and not those little trailers, but at the same time, I wouldn't care about the game without those trailers. I don't really know how to feel about it, you know? Are there any early access schemes that you fell for, Alex? Any early access games? I mean, does do like Kickstarter, like Indiegogo games count? Because those are technically early access, I guess. If they're on Steam right now, then yeah, I guess. I mean, like, I, I've backed games that sucked, but like... I haven't. I have never really gone out and bought a game specifically that was in early access on Steam because I felt like that was a waste. Was Don't Starve in early access when you got it for me? 
the beta for it was in for multiplayer my roommate tim has a pretty good philosophy on early access games when he looks at an early access game he'll look at the price and the content that's there and say okay this game is 15 dollars. is there 15 dollars worth of content in here if no i'll wait if yes then yeah sure i guess i'll get it right now because you shouldn't buy an early access game with the intent of thinking, oh, I can't wait till this gets better. Because a lot of early access games don't. Or, mm-hmm. like, the Dungeon of Dreadmore devs, they end up going belly up before they can finish the game. So, that that's a thing. I, I, I don't like early access. I get why it's a thing. But, eh, get them out of here. So, next one here, this is from Drew Drewstar. Which I believe is a, I almost said Homestuck reference, a JoJo reference. Did either Tad or Alex ever have a high school sweetheart, TM? Or were you too busy focused on video games and shitposting? Oh, yeah, I had like 30. Nah, I just played video games all fucking day, dude. Girls are fucking thoughts. (laughs) All women are queens. If she breathes, she's a thought! I actually, uh, no shit, there was this girl who messaged me on Facebook that I used to go to school with, and I totally just, like, bailed on her to play God of War, because <laughs> I, I knew I was going to have more fun doing that than anything else. Yeah, I decided that, like, one random date I went on when I was in high school, because my sister forced me to, because I literally didn't give a shit, I just wanted to play video games. So I just said, like, oh, okay, this will shut her up. And then after that, I just never talked to them again, pretty much, and then went back to playing video games. I just didn't care. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so next question here. This one's from Fox McCloud 23 What are some of the old machinimas you remember watching from early YouTube? Uh, I, uh, I guess this counts as a machinima. One of the first videos I ever saw on YouTube was... Well, it was like... I, I count these all as one video. It was like Paper Mario bloopers into Mario 64 bloopers. They're like 10 or 11 years old now. But I would watch these in the library because they had subtitles on them for like the wacky jokes he would make. And they didn't have speakers at the library, so I couldn't watch like normal videos. I would watch Mario 64 bloopers. And then when I finally got like a way to watch them at home, they had the Scatman music on there and I had no idea. But those are those are the videos I remember watching, and then uh, Freeman's Mind. I remember that. Uh, what were some other ones, Alex? That, well, do you remember? Freeman's Mind is not really a sh- machinima. That's more of like a weird role play let's play thing. I don't really know what to really call that. But because machinima, machinima is like a movie that's just done with in game stuff. Oh, oh, yes. On my su- on my old YouTube channel when I was real little, I had a Smash Brothers Brawl movie that I made in Windows Movie Maker using screenshots, but I didn't activate, like, debug mode. So what I would do is I would just, like, go into practice mode and, like, spawn items to get shit. And I didn't know how to install custom models or anything like that, so I would, like, uh... I I remember what it was, was, um... It was on the Luigi's Mansion stage, and it was Sonic turning into a werehog. This is before the game came out, so Sega, I'll wait for my fucking royalty checks. <laughs> and then Luigi had to get, like, the metal box to go fight him. And I had part one, thank you for watching, part two coming soon. And it is now uh, July 3rd, <laughs> 2018, and um, keep an eye out for it, you never know. Wink! You actually never told me that. You're so fucking stupid. So, speaking <laughs> of stupid, so we get into Machinima, because I was a WoW kitty, uh, I watched, like, every WoW Machinima I fucking could, dude. Like, I think the one that I... I remembered this just a little while ago while having a conversation with my friends. So you asked this question at a pretty good fucking time. This really... I can remember, like, three jokes from it, so it can't be good, Right. I'm going to assume that it is aged like absolute, like, milk. Just bad. <laughs> but it's called, like, the Azerothian Supervillains, where it was, like, it was, like, a BC machinima of, like, Elodin, Kael'thas, and Archimon doing just, like, going on shitty little misadventures and shit. And I don't remember much about it, but I can only imagine that, uh, if I've blocked it out that much from my memory, it must have been super turbo ultra hard G gay. <laughs> Uh, so that, that's old, that's old YouTube. Uh, this question is from Stupid Geeks. Who do you choose? The Virgin Review Bra or the Chad Joey's World Tour? 
Now, I don't know who either of those are, so I'm going to say <laughs> instead 8-Bit Brody. Uh, uh, I have literally no idea who it th- any of those three people are, so uh, uh, I don't know. Alex, what I, I think, videos. from what I understand, it's it's basically Joe Goes. Does he still do videos? Do you know if Joe okay. Goes still does stuff? Yes, but the problem is he doesn't go to fun places anymore because people know who he is, so he has to go to like literal who locations and they're not funny. Oh, at that least, sucks. At least, at least last one I watched him back at like five years ago. The last video he made that made me laugh was the one before he like saved up money to go to Sweden. Because he had this one joke. He's like, hey, thanks for the fans. We're finally able to fund this trip. So now I'm taking the money and running, suckers. And the video goes dark for a little bit. And he comes back, nah, just kidding. We'll put the plan trip uh, really soon. <laughs> I like it. It was just like a dumb little video. Alright, now this question here is from Bundles. Would you or would you not be opposed to the sweet, sweet dollar bills through sponsored episodes? Why or why not? Uh, clarification. Doesn't have to be every episode or even sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Save 50% using the code Roxy Lolanda. Please step on my face. Just once in a while for certain products you like. Now, okay. We actually did have something planned with, uh, I think it was, um, Brian, who was in the Naruto episode where he played, where he got really good at Naruto out of spite because he hated the game. He introduced me to Gamer Goo. <laughs> which is the absolute worst name what it was is it was like um it was like hand moisturizer that would dry your hand no, no no it's hand de-moisturizer oh you're right yeah yeah to keep you in keep me in the game and i'm 90 percent sure they knew that their their name was super goofy and what happened is i was like you know what if they will let me use the promo code goo boys i will go for this and they did, and they let me use that, but I didn't want to, like, do it into an episode until I got, like, Alex's sample thing, because I, I didn't I, want to just, like, sh- I, like whore it out for no reason, you know? Well, I mean, I would have. I don't know why you just couldn't have done it anyway. But I ended up just thinking, like, yeah, you know what? It didn't really work out. Because I was thinking about it, like, goo, the, the, it would have been a pretty good goof for, like, one episode, because no one would have believed us that Gamer Goo and Goo Boys were all... It, it would have been pretty goofy. Pretty goofy. But it just didn't end up working out. Uh, but I will... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think we're big enough for, like, actual-ass sponsors, like Audible. Or, uh... Now, our, now, let me tell you about gaming is sponsored by Audible, where you can read over five books. It was eight. Nine books. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe in the future. It'd be nice to have. Now, this question here. It's from Good Neighbor Man Ed. Alex, do us a top 10 uh, Fate Grand Order Girls and a top 5 GFLT dolls. I don't know what that means. That's Girls Frontline. And, uh, well, can't really do it off the top of my head, but uh, I have an approved Girls and Boys list over on the Discord and the fucking Wheel of Fate uh, channel that's pinned. Of all the acceptable to post girls in that Discord, and all the acceptable to post uh, post post boys in that fucking uh, Discord as well. When it comes to girls frontline uh, T dolls, I didn't really get into girls frontline that much, but the best girls are uh, Thompson MP40, and uh, I think it's like Car 98K is the gun, the, the the sniper rifle. Those three are the best ones. Ted, ignore the fact that two of those are from Nazi Germany. <laughs> well, I can't now. <laughs> and uh, that's those are the only three that I really like. Liked a lot of them just felt kind of generic. TVH, but I also didn't get into the game enough for them to really warm up to me past like those three. Yeah, the only phone game I play is Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, and you better believe I'm gonna dump that shit immediately when RuneScape Mobile hits. So this next question here from the Slam and Jam 39. Do you think Andrew Hussey playing the retcon? Also, Fafari is fucking trash, lol. Okay, first of all, uh, you're wrong, rude? but you're also right. You're wrong and that Fafari is fucking trash, because that's rude. But you are right in that I don't I don't I don't fucking think he planned the retcon at all. It was something that he tried to write himself out of the corner that he put himself in. It also just like didn't give a shit past 2012. I um I'm hoping because I've got a lot. I've I've had the fucking Homestuck number four episode done since October of 2017. Remember Homestuck month? I sure do. 
the the problem I had with it though is that I have all I have everything written down, but it's all in bullet points and sloppy paragraphs because I would write it in like my email at work, and uh, because we because I I kept trying really really hard to get an episode out every week on top of revival on top of other stuff that I end up being like okay well I can't finish up the homestuck one we got to do this one or we got to do this. And so I ended up just getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And now I'm at the point where I'm probably going to have to speed read through the entire comic to get back in that, get back in that like head space. So that's what's going on there. Uh, next question here from level one ogre. Hey, Tad, who is Guy Humano? So I've referenced Guy Humano in Revival, a Dungeon and Dragons real play podcast. Guy Humano was my um, first D&D character. He was a human and his, uh, my idea was I was looking at the race and I saw a changeling and I'm like, okay, I'm going to play definitely a human wizard, hundred percent human, not a changeling guy, human plus 24 to disguise as human. And that was basically his get. He was just, he was just guy humano and somehow he became the face of the party. And I gave him like a silly, I gave him a guy humano voice, which I ended up realizing later on was incredibly close to Taco the Wizard from, uh... Fuck, what is it? It's not, it's not Adventure Time. Um, the, the McElroy D&D podcast, The Adventure Zone. It ended up sounding shockingly like that, despite not listening to Adventure Zone until after we did that game. So, uh, that's Guy Humano. And he is dead and gone forever, because that game got cancelled, because that's when Michael moved to Japan. So the penultimate question here from Caleb Burton, the electric fat ass Pokemon. <laughs> what are some characters that you think are unjustly despised by everyone? Hmm. See, you told me that question ahead of time to think about it, but it's really hard to think of a character that's like really overly hated, but like doesn't really deserve it. You know, Alex. Like, do you got anybody? Alex. The Okay, Alex. There's one character in the world that you were literally, literally the only person who was excited about. Oh, right. Duh. Well, he's not hated anymore, but I guess at the time he was. Abigail from Street Fighter V. You know, on release. Everyone just didn't get it. He was cool, and his trailer looked really bad because it was actually bugged, and he was always in his v trigger form where he had the extra muscle mass, so he looked really, like, disproportionate, more so than usual. But, uh, the thing is, though, Ted, is that after, like, a year or so of Abigail being out, people fucking love Abigail. He's fucking great. It also helps that he's top tier, too. Also, when he's backdash, he does finger guns. Yeah, like, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of charm and, uh, personality to him. So people warmed up to him. So I, I don't really count him anymore. So like not counting him, it's hard for me to think of anybody. Like there are people that there are characters that people don't like. Like I know a couple of my friends who hate Goku. There is literally nothing wrong with Goku as a character. He's simple, uh, kind-hearted, pure heart, likes to fight and likes to have a good time. He's just he's a doofus, but he's got a fucking big heart. You know what I mean? Goku he's a good boy. is. I understand when, like, when you, when people will look at um, Dragon Ball Super, he's really fucking bad in it because he makes some very shitty decisions. One of them is um, there's a point in the Tournament of Power arc where uh, one of them is just like, "Hey, if I beat Goku, can you guys like call off destroying the universes?" They're like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." And so Goku's like, "Nah, nah, I'm gonna beat this guy up," and just like, whatever, he'll risk literally. Every universe that he's not a part, he will risk an entire universe just to fight someone really strong. Goku's a, yeah. he's a drug addict, but his drug is punching. But I still like Goku. I've had him on my team. I've never played a match of Dragon Ball Fighters where Goku is not on my team. Because I think he's fun and cool. And he's positive and I like him. So that's, that's what I choose. I choose Goku. Well, Much gonna... akin to my Smash Bros. choice, Goku. Yeah, so this is the last same. question, Alex. Get ready. This is All from right. Skeletan. Alex, have you caught up on Common Rider build yet? What do you think of the series so far? Oh, that's pretty... Sorry to give you a really disappointing answer, but, like, no. <laughs> 
So but, anyway, I stopped watching it like episode 12. I actually wanted to get back uh, into it because my friend who's still watching says it's really, really fucking good. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer that question eventually. But at the moment, uh, from what I saw, it was all right. I saw like the initial twist of who the main character actually was and shit. And I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. But I was just busy with real life and, you know, just being too old for video games. So I just haven't watched it. I will say one thing about the show, though. Uh, cause I, I said this before is I used to not like the theme song cause it sounded really, really weird. And I still don't like it as much as other openings, but the song itself grew on me. So I have this opinion of it. I think it's a good song, but a bad opening song. It's the super paper Mario of common writer themes. But yes. you know what is good is, uh, we've, I've decided on a name. So if you if you saw, um, I posted on YouTube and Twitter, and on the Discord, that uh, myself, Alex, and Alba from one of the first from the first April Fool's Day are uh, going to do a common writer podcast oh, yeah. where we watch. Um, we're going to start with Double, and we're going to watch a few episodes, then put a podcast out for people to watch along with us. And uh, the name I've decided on is Henshin Homies. I could not just. It was it was very hard to choose between that and Toko Tuesdays. But I like Henshin Homies more. So keep an eye on that. That's going to be pretty fun. We'll probably do those uh, probably weekly. Because those will be... Uh, yeah, I doubt it. I mean, well, they should be pretty easy. As long as our schedules line up, which I believe we found a date that does work. Unless one of us changes fucking jobs again. Or loses their job. Alex. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Mr. Uh, Dick Joke Gets Fired. <laughs> so that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. And if it goes well, then we might do, we'll probably do a poll to decide if we go on Build or x or one of the other writer shows. But uh, that'll do it for the June questions of the month. A lot of good, a lot of good high quality content here. Now, Alex, uh, let's go ahead and do the, uh, the end of the show Patreon shout outs. We didn't forget this time, bros. All right, want me to start? Yeah, that's why I said Alex Stardust. Uh, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So check it out. We give a shout out to these uh, these these nice good boys. We got uh, Fox McCloud twenty three. We got Sean Dunsmore. We got Cameron Chapman. We got Rusty fucking Shackleford. We got Jonathan Glassnap, Chris Kirk, Glitch Nation, and Archaic EX. Now over here in this corner, weighing in at unidentified pounds. Jaron Kiwi, Lors the Ninth, Auxerius, Oscar Shavaria, Phil the Muffin, and my personal favorite, and the one that I'm putting my money on, Lavender Sheepy. So that'll uh, that'll do it. Uh, keep an eye out for uh, the the rest of the good good shit that we're be uh, that we're gonna be putting out in the next week or so. Uh, you can uh, submit your own questions at the $2 and up on Patreon there. Uh, that'll be in the description, well as the YouTube, or probably not YouTube, the iTunes, uh, Google Play, the Twitter account, the Discord, all that good, good shit. And uh, Alex, help me think of a funny, funny, funny joke, joke meme to, to end this on. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the one joke, it's like really funny. Yeah, yeah that one joke. Oh, 